Hello, my name is Jacob Mercer, and I will be speaking to you today on the fundamentals of redstone. Redstone is a crucial component of popular game Minecraft. It has been a part of the game since its creation, but has really flourished into what it is today as part of the 1.5 update, also known as the Redstone update. Uh, I've divided my speech into some of into three parts, the first being the basic components, the pieces that carry the signals. First and foremost with any redstone circuitry is redstone dust, which is obtained from the mining of redstone ore or from killing the witch mob. Uh, it carries any redstone signal a maximum of 15 blocks, diminishing by one signal strength every piece of dust it runs through. Next is the redstone torch, which powers the block directly above it and will turn off if the power it's attached if the block it's attached to it becomes powered. This helps it uh, both invert signal and carry signals directly upward. Next is the redstone repeater. The redstone repeater is mainly used to revitalize redstone signals. As I mentioned, redstone dust can only carry a signal 15 blocks. A repeater uh, sends out a signal strength of 15 if, regardless of what signal strength it receives. It also adds a delay of one to four <coughs> ticks. Next is the comparator. The comparator compares signals, the signal strength. It has three inputs, one on each side and one in the back. It has two modes, compare mode and subtract mode. In compare mode, it will compare the signal strength of the side to the, the signal strength of the back. If the signal strength of the back is stronger, it emits a signal but if the signal strength of the side is greater, it does not emit a signal. In subtract mode, it subtracts the signal strength of the side from the signal strength of the back and emits the difference. Next is power input. Uh, one of the most basic power inputs are buttons. It comes in two varieties. So, stone and wood. A stone button releases a pulse of 10 ticks in length, 10 ticks equaling one second, and a wood button emits a slightly longer signal of 15 seconds equal to 1.5 seconds. And it next is levers. Levers have two states, on and off and when it is in the on state, it releases continuous power. Next is redstone blocks, which is craftable by red, three red, nine redstone dust to filling a three by three crafting grid. Redstone blocks are always in an on state, and redstone blocks are the, one of the few redstone components that can be pushed by a piston. Next are pressure plates. Pressure plates emit a signal when something is on them and come in three main varieties, stone, wood, and weighted. And, and the, variety mean, the, the variety changes what it takes to trigger them. A wood pressure plate can be triggered by virtually anything, entities, mobs, what have you. A stone pressure plate cannot be triggered by an entity and requires a mob, be it player, monster, or uh, animal, a weighted pressure plate can only be triggered by the player. Next are interaction components. Interaction components are what allow redstone devices to perform their functions. They are and all everything we've covered before now just tells redstone components these components when they should perform their functions. As I've mentioned before, our pistons 
which will push the block directly in front of it and for a maximum of 12 blocks and by adding a sticky piston to it in a crafting table it will also retract the block. After that is hoppers. Hoppers so will pull items from inventories above it and place it to the inventory it points into. It will not perform this function if it is powered. After hoppers are droppers and dispensers. Droppers will either drop the entity directly in front of them when their power state is changed, or if they are faced into an inventory, will place the item into that inventory. This allows for upward transit of items, which is something hoppers are not capable of. Dispensers will, in will interact with certain items if their power state is changed. Like, for example, they will fire an arrow or place water if there's a water bucket in it. Redstone lamps emit light when they are powered and don't. They're mainly used for either cool lighting or for turning on and off mob traps because certain spawners won't spawn if they have light in them. Now these make up the, these fundamental circuits make up any logic that redstone devices perform. Up until now, I've included pictures that ceases now because while all circuits with the same name perform the same function, how they look varies because it's all a matter of user preference and what the situation allows. Monostable circuits emit a one-tick pulse when a signal is applied. It comes in three varieties, rising edge, emits the pulse at the start of signal, falling edge at the end of signal, and dual edge actually emits two pulses, one at start and one at end of signal. Then are the basic logic gates. These deal with combining multiple inputs into a single output. OR gates will release a signal if any one, sig any one input is on. AND gates all inputs must be on for it to release a signal. XOR gates will release a signal if both inputs are in different states. One has to be on and the other off for it to release a signal. Then are clocks, which systematically release pulses at fixed intervals and pulse extenders, which will extend the length of a signal after the point when a signal stops. Then is the T-flip-flop, which will change its output every time a new signal is applied. And it's typically done by attaching a monostable circuit to a sticky piston. There is one major component that I put omitted up until now, pro arguably the most important component, because without it nothing else is possible. And that component is you, because redstone is only limited by your imagination and your understanding.